Everyone's heard of generative AI, but what does that mean for the data analyst? Today, we're going to be looking at ChatGPT's code interpreter to try to answer this question. Code interpreter can do a lot of things. It can help you import your data. It can check and clean your data. It can do a little bit of data modeling for you so that it's normalized into a star schema. It can suggest some KPIs that could be useful for your data analysis and help visualize that into something that makes sense. It can even help create a data story for your dashboards. So there's a lot of things to unpack here. We're going to start with how to enable Code Interpreter with OpenAI. First, you have to navigate to their website, log in or sign up. And once you've done that, all you need to do is click on these three buttons right here next to your name, and you're going to go into My Plans. You gotta pay for the premium version. This enables access to the ChatGPT beta features, as well as ChatGPT version four. Without it, you're not gonna be able to access the Code Interpreter. Then you're going to need to go into settings and beta, click on the beta features, and you've got to click on the code interpreter to enable this. Now we're going to go back to ChatGPT. And once you hover over the GPT form, you can select the code interpreter beta. Once you do this, the plus sign will appear in your chat box and you'll be able to upload files. The data is going to be from the data DNA challenge for July 23. And it's basically just two sheets in an Excel where you can see that it has a data dictionary sheet and the actual data. The data itself is about hotel data and we're going to plug it right in. To use the code interpreter, you're going to simply need to upload the file and type what you want the code interpreter to do with it. Let's start with something simple. Load this data and analyze it. Check for inconsistencies. So we're going to run this and I'm going to speed things up because it's going to take a little bit of time. So the first thing to realize is that it does actually have some problems reading the data because it's on two different sheets. So now it's trying to find the information by itself. This is pretty cool how it's doing this. It's actually trying to read the data and it understands that the file structure is non-standard. It understands that the actual columns in the first sheet are not actually data and it understands that uh, it's doing something wrong, right? It's even saying, I apologize for the confusion. It seems like the data loading process has not been successful. It's pretty interesting that it can make a guess and test the hypothesis. But this is, of course, something that, you know, so you really don't have to go into if you just clarify in the prompt. Now we can tell that the code interpreter has, in fact, not loaded the data. The way that it actually works is that all of the ac actions are being done with Python code, which is pretty cool. But since it did not succeed in loading the data, let's try it again, but give it a little bit more information. So now we're going to let the code interpreter know that this data set has two sheets, one which is a data dictionary and one which has data. And we're going to see how this goes. So now we can see that it's actually identified that the Excel file has two sheets. It's actually used a little bit of Python code to load the sheet names of the Excel file. So now it's going to try loading the data from the hotel bookings because it's made a guess that the hotel bookings contains the data and the summary contains the data dictionary. And now that it's successfully loaded the data, it can try to find missing values because as you might have, you might remember, we asked the code interpreter to check for inconsistencies. One thing worth pointing out is that it's found the missing values from children, country, agent, and company. But the way it's done this is pretty nice because it's identified that even though children has NA, which shows the lack of values, and country, agent, and company has null values as the uh, values that are missing, it's still identified that all of these are in fact missing values. It's further been able to analyze the data. It's able to identify what kind of data type there are, it's able to identify that the missing values in agent and company may have specific reasons. You know, for example, hotel guests did not book through both an agent and a company. It's usually one or the other. So pretty reasonable analysis there. And it's also able to load the summary sheets to add more information into the actual data set. So it's able to use the summary sheets to identify if the can if the is cancelled column indicates if the booking was cancelled or not, which is probably not directly obvious just by looking at the data. So now we're going to try to see if we can do a little bit of data modeling with this data set. I'm going to ask the code interpreter to normalize the data to be used in a Power BI report to follow best practices such as start the star schema. 
The code interpreter is able to recognize what a star schema is, and it's able to try to apply that logic to the data set, which is very, very cool. Fact tables contain the main data to analyze and usually include foreign keys to the dimension table. And it's able to divide the data sets into dimensions. So all of these, there are going to be four different dimension tables, and the fact table will have foreign keys referencing these dimension tables. Now, even though it's managed to pull off some normalization, when it's trying to relay that information, information to us, you can see one of the problems with ChatGPT, which is that it actually has some trouble sometimes trying to create tables. So it'll, you know, it's like give some JSON text, but it's not exactly what we're looking for. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to extract this to Excel. So you can just download the file by clicking the download file link, and that will engage in a download. So we're just going to open the file and check it out. Now, even though we had 32 columns in the original big tables, that's been normalized into four different dimension tables and one fact table. So you can see that there are some ID keys that are relating the fact ID to the dimension ID with all of the information that you need. This looks pretty good, to be honest. And in Power BI, if we load the data, it looks like this. So we've got a fact table in the middle, and it's a perfect star schema. But here's the problem with generative AI. It's not consistent. A different trial where I was trying to normalize the data actually gave me one fact table and seven different dimension tables, which is pretty good. And if you look at the actual data loaded into Power BI, and if you look at this data model, you can tell that it's clearly different from the initial try. Deciding which approach of normalization is better really depends on which is more suited to your analysis. It's impossible for the AI with such little information to know what the data model should be between these two options. In this case, the only way to resolve it is to give the prompt more information about what you actually need. But for now, we're going to leave this as is. So now we're going to go back and we're going to ask the code interpreter to suggest some KPIs for us to use in a data analysis. I'm going to use a little bit of a more complex prompt. I'm going to ask the ChatGPT take on a role of a Power BI report developer who's creating a dashboard using this hotel data. The end users are regional level managers and C-suite members, and as such, they need a dashboard that shows the overall statistics and trends, but also regional data. I'm asking it to come up with KPIs that would fit a dashboard like this while including their formulas. So if I press this, so after a while, we have all of the KPIs that it's suggesting. So there are a couple, one, two, three, four, five different KPIs that's, that it has suggested, as well as the formulas behind them. It's really interesting that it is able to give KPIs, even though it notes here in this paragraph that some of these KPIs require data that is not present in the current data set, which to be honest is, you know, it's like very cool. It can give you some analysis of what data could improve the data analysis even further. Now we're going to make visualizations using these KPIs and we'll see how that goes. The code interpreter has given us a couple of different suggestions for visualizations, and it's going to calculate the KPIs as well as making <clears throat> some assumptions about the data sets. It's pretty cool how it can already very quickly show cancellation rate by month, average daily rate by month, different KPIs by month for most of the different items, distribution of customer types, and it even gives a little bit of information what all of these visuals are. It's very, very cool how it can do all of this. Now we're going to ask it to create these KPIs in a layout. The result is a little bit underwhelming, to be honest, because it only describes how the layout would look like if you were using a dashboard tool such as Power BI or Tableau. But overall, I, I think it's a 7 out of 10. Top row, KPI, second row, trends over time, third row, other visuals, bottom row, filters. I really think filters should be at the top or have its own panel. But you can also ask it to do something like create all the KPI and visuals in a layout for a dashboard keeping in mind gestalt principles and general sizes of objects and using text to show spatial areas such as dashes and lines. And it'll create something like this for you, which is the same thing as what it described, but now you can visually see it, which is pretty cool. It's very primitive. It's just text. But if you actually, uh, you know, take, take the text and paste it into the text viewer, you can see that 
honestly, this is probably good enough to be a very, very limited mockup, which means that once ChatGPT is able to create some more drawings, this could be a very, very easy way of creating a mockup for a dashboard. So what can Code Interpreter do for your data? Loading, quality checking, modeling, visualization, and storytelling. Pretty cool stuff, but don't be too worried just yet. ChatGPT still has a lot of issues that prevent it from being used in a business environment. Things like the security concerns of your data, the fact that a lot of Python libraries don't currently work on the code interpreter environment. There's a two gigabyte limit on file size and the fact that at the end of the day, code interpreter is not very consistent. So things are changing in the back end all of the time. So when I'm testing things, testing from one week to another, the output can absolutely change as you saw even with the data modeling session. I hope you learned something today. Thanks for watching. Take care.